Hey everyone, Breadth First Search, or in short, BFS, is an essential algorithm for traversing or searching graphs or graph-like data structures. The time complexity of BFS is O of the number of nodes plus the number of edges. There are several applications of this algorithm, one we will see in this video, and that is um, to calculate the shortest path between two nodes in an unweighted graph. Another application would be the Ford Fulkerson algorithm, which calculates a maximum flow in the network. And I'm sure you will come across more applications of it in computer science. So let's have a look at this example. We have this graph consisting of 11 nodes and we want to start BFS from the node zero. Now the algorithm traverses the graph in the following way. In the first iteration, we look at all neighbors of the node zero we have three, five, and nine as neighbors of this node. And all those neighbors are stored in a queue. So first the three is stored in the queue, then the five is stored in the queue, and then the nine is stored in the queue. And afterwards the node zero will be marked as visited. So I make this node gray. And now the algorithm looks for the next node to visit. And the next node to visit is always the first one in the queue. So in this case, three. So the algorithm visits three and puts every neighbor of the three that has not been visited in the queue. So the only neighbor of the three is the zero and zero has already been visited. So nothing happens in this case. And three will be removed from the queue. Now five is our first element in the queue and we will look at all unvisited neighbors of the five. And those are the two and the four. And now two and four are added to the queue. Now the five will be marked as visited and will be deleted from the queue, which leaves us with nine as the first element in the queue. So we visit nine, look at all unvisited neighbors of the nine. There are none. So in this iteration, nothing happens. And we have two in the front of the queue. So we visit the node two, look at all unvisited neighbors of the two, in this case, only the 10, and add the 10 to the queue. We mark two as visited and remove it from the queue. Now you will probably have a feeling about um, what comes next. So we again look at the first element in the queue, which is the four. We visit the four, put all its unvisited neighbors, in this case, one and eight in the queue, and mark four as visited. Remove four from the queue and go on with the 10. The 10 has no unvisited neighbors, so we mark 10 as visited, we move it from the queue. Now one is the first element in the queue, so we look at node one, check its unvisited neighbors, six and seven, add them to the queue and mark one as visited. Now um, for the last three nodes, the procedure is the same. We visit eight, see that it has no unvisited neighbors, we move it from the queue, we visit six, um, the same applies. And at last we visit seven and we're done with the algorithm. And now we can return a list of all the nodes in the order that BFS visited them. I hope this example helped to clarify how this algorithm works. And now let's get into a little bit more detail with the implementation. I will use Python in this example. Um, because Python is easy to understand and you should be able to convert this to any other programming language. In Python, we can implement a graph um, with a dictionary. And in this dictionary, the keys are all the nodes. For example, in line one, we have um, the key zero. This stands for the node zero and the node zero has a list map to it of three, five and nine. And three, five and nine are all, all neighbors of the zero. So this is uh, a pretty cool way to implement a graph. Now let's get into the function for BFS. This is pretty short. BFS takes only two parameters, the graph and a start node. At the end, we want to return this list of visited nodes. So at the beginning, we um, initialize it with an empty list. Then we use another list to implement our queue. Um, there are certainly better ways, but um, I just want to keep it simple. So we initialize our queue with only the start node in it. And then um, we do the following while the queue is not empty. We pop the queue at index zero, which, which always gives us um, the first element in it and call it current node. 
And then we um, mark the current node as visited by appending it to our list of visited nodes. And now we iterate through all neighbors of the current node. And we just check if the neighbor is already visited. And if it's not already visited, we append it to our queue. And at the end, we just return the list of visited nodes. Since it's pretty boring to only have this list of um, nodes, I want to show you how you can use BFS to implement a shortest path algorithm. Therefore, we just have to modify um, BFS a little bit. This is almost the same function, but some little things happened here. Um, we have a third parameter called end node because we want to um, return the shortest path from the start node to the end node. And we use another dictionary called predecessor nodes, um, which just stores um, the predecessor of every node visited. Or instead of predecessor, you could also say parent. And this dictionary is always filled when we visit a new neighbor. So every time we visit a new neighbor, we set um, the predecessor of this neighbor to the current node. So these are all things um, that are changed in this function. And now we have this um, dictionary of predecessor nodes and we can use it to backtrack the shortest path from the start node to the end node. So I wrote um, a function that takes this um, predecessor nodes dictionary and the start node and the end node and creates a path from it. So this function is called shortest path. Um, this path is initialized with only the end node. And now what we do is we look at all parent nodes and build a path from it. So first we set um, the current node to the end node and um, we go backwards through all parent nodes until we reach the start node. This happens in this while loop. Um, we always go one step back by setting the current node to the predecessor node of the current node and appending the current node to the path. This will leave us with the path in the reverse order. So before returning it, I reverse this with the Python reverse list function and then I return the path. Now we call the function, for example, on our test graph and we want to um, get the shortest path from zero to one. The result will be zero, five, four, one. And we can actually confirm this by looking at our graph and as you can see, 0541 is the only path from 0 to 1, and so it's the shortest path. I hope this video helped you to get a better understanding of BFS. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about programming and algorithms. And leave a comment about uh, suggestions to help me improve um, my videos. And I hope I see you in the next one.